Morning. How are we all? Trust you're all keeping well and keeping safe. This morning we're up to uh, week or part 17 in our series Freedom in Jesus. And today I want to look at God's will. And I've entitled our message, God Will Make It Clear to You. Let's just listen to what it says in Philippians chapter 3 and verse 15. All of us who are mature should take such a view of things. And that's relating to what's already been said in this book. And if at some point you think differently, that too God will make clear to you. Let's just pray. Heavenly Father, today I pray that you would just undertake for us and minister to us in Jesus' name. Open our ears, open our eyes, and open our hearts that we might receive what you would say to us. We ask it, Father, in Jesus' name, to his glory. We all said, Amen. You know, these, this verse tells us that God will reveal his will to us. He will reveal truth to us. He will correct us and correct our thinking when we think differently. Notice that, and if in some point you think differently, that too God will make clear to you. In our world today, there are, there are a lot of people, there are lots of people looking in different places to find truth, looking to find spiritual truth and spiritual understanding. In fact, there are, there are people who claim to be able to to, to tell us or tell them what's going on and what's going to go on in the future, what their future's going to hold. And people claim to know a variety of things. Sadly, sadly, people are prepared to listen. You see people on the fairgrounds and on our, on our seafronts where, you know, they're, they're, they claim that they can tell your future, help you to make decisions and give you advice on things and counsel your base on the stars and on the spirits. And these people are trying to infiltrate our minds. And in so doing, they're creating, they're creating an environment where we, where we as individuals make wrong decisions based on wrong information and wrong wisdom. We don't want that, do we? And here's the truth. Whatever it is, Whatever it is, if you have a relationship with Jesus, God will make it clear to you all things in accordance with his will, his word, through his spirit in your life and in my life. With God's word and his spirit, we have all the tools we need in our lives to become good decision makers and we'll have little problem knowing God's will in every situation that we encounter. We don't need outside influences to dictate and to direct our thinking. And when it comes to making right decisions, the Bible clearly teaches us that God does give guidance to his people. All of us who are mature should take such a view of things. And if in some point you think differently, that too, God, will make clear to you. Notice the Apostle Paul tells us that God will make it clear to us. Make it clear to us what his opinion and his views are. In other words, he will lead us to make the right decisions. We might start out thinking one way, but God will lead us in his will. He will make it clear to us in our lives. But what actually, actually does it mean to let God lead us or lead you? Does God have a specific will for every decision in our lives? How does God guide us to make decisions that are best for us in our lives? Think about it. Every one of us make decisions. What school we attend or what school we send our children to, what job we take, what profession we enter... How do I pick the right person to marry? What colour car do I buy? Do I choose the right place to live? How do I choose the right house to buy or car to drive? Do I trust in the flesh and my own ability? Do I listen to those who say things contrary to God's word? Does God really care about these things? And 
if he does, how does he do it? How does he lead us? How does he guide us? A lot of our decisions are based off wisdom. The book of James tells us that there are two paths that lead to two different kinds of wisdom. One, he, he describes as heavenly wisdom. We read in James 3, verse 17, But the wisdom that comes from heaven is first of all pure, then peace-loving, considerate, submissive, full of mercy, and good fruit, impartial, and sincere. The other kind of wisdom doesn't come from heaven, and he describes the, that wisdom like this uh, in verse 15. This wisdom is not that which comes down from above, but is earthly, unspiritual, and from the devil. Clearly, our wisdom is heavenward. The other isn't. That says to me that if a, if a person is looking to anyone other than Jesus, to God, to help him or her make their decisions, then that person is in real danger of making a wrong decision. We have to be careful who we listen to, don't we? we? You know, we've been set free. We have freedom in Jesus and God will make it clear to us as we look to him in our lives, as we seek to make those decisions in our lives. We need to know God's will. In fact, the Bible uh, talks about four basic categories of God's will. I've listed them like this. They're God's sovereign will, God's saving will, God's moral will and God's individual will. Let me explain what I mean, mean by these. Firstly, God's sovereign will. Firstly, when, when we say God's sovereign will, we're, we're talking about the fact that God has a, a predetermined plan for everything that happens in the universe. This is God's perfect plan and he's working out behind the scenes of history. It started before the earth was formed and it continues in eternity. God's sovereign will is his doing and human beings, nature or circumstances can't disrupt it or change it. In fact, I'd go as far as to, to say we human beings can't even grasp it. We can't grasp it with our finite understanding. It's, it's, way, it's way beyond us. But in God's sovereign will, everything Everything fits together perfectly. And that saying is true. There's no surprises to God. Wars, earthquakes, elections, kings, uh, di dictators, laws have been passed, laws haven't been passed, countries that exist, they don't exist, and every other circumstance and incident in history as well are all part of an overall plan that we can't fathom. Only God knows. That's sovereignty. And we can't expect God to put together anything less. That's why uh, King David wrote this in Psalm 24, verse 1. He, he wrote this, The earth is the Lord's and everything in it, the world and all who live in it. That's God's sovereign will. God's sovereign will is surrounded by Jesus, and Jesus is, is all, it, it, all we need, and it's all about him. Next, we brings us to God's saving will. Jesus speaks of this uh, when he says this in John chapter 6 verse 40. For my, uh, for my Father's will is that everyone who looks to the Son and believes in him shall have eternal life. And I will raise him up on the last day. God's saving will is that anyone who responds in faith by believing that Jesus' death on the cross and his resurrection from the dead are all that's necessary to take care of his or her uh, sin problem will receive forgiveness for their sins and dwell with God for eternity in heaven. Praise his name. God's saving will is accomplished whenever a person says yes to Jesus. Whenever a person bows the knee and says, yes, I want to receive Jesus in my life. When a per person puts their faith in Jesus because truly we have freedom in him and we are set free in Jesus. Let me say this morning and if at and, and if some point you think differently that too God will make clear to you. God's saving will 
is at the heart of why you and I are still living on this earth. You think about it. There are only two things that you and I, as Christians, can do here on earth that we can't do in heaven. One is to sin, and the other is to tell people about Jesus. To tell people how they can have a relationship with him. How, how they can find salvation in him. Freedom in him. So which of those two things do you think is the reason God has left us here? It's Jesus. Telling people about Jesus. And if at some point you think differently, that too God will make clear to you. Next, we have God's moral will. A third category of God's will is what I'd call God's moral will. By that I mean the specific commands that's, that are given to us in the, in the Bible that, that teach people how they ought to live and believe. How we ought to live so that we might have the fullest and most abundant life in Jesus. Psalm 86 verse 11 says, Teach me your ways, O Lord, that I may live according to your truth. Grant me purity of heart that I may honour you. And when we read the words of Jesus in Sermon on the Mount in Matthew 5 through 7, we're given an insight into God's moral will. Jesus spoke the very words that his father had given to him to speak to us. Let me add this, Jesus could well have spoken the same words as the Apostle Paul. And if in some point you think differently, that too, God will make clear to you. God's will is that we have an abundant life. In Jesus, we have everything we need. And Jesus said, the thief, he only comes to kill, to steal and destroy, but I have come that you would have life and life to the full. And that's God's moral will for our lives, that we would walk the walk, not just talk the talk, that we would act in obedience to the word of God, that we would act in obedience to, to God's teachings in his word. And fourthly, God's individual will. There are a lot of examples of God's individual will in the Bible. He demonstrated this will in the life of Noah, Abraham, Moses, Joshua, Gideon, David, Peter, Paul, you know, and many others as we read through the word. God hasn't changed since biblical times. He still gives special guidance or, or, or revelation to his followers. So in keeping with the words of the Apostle Paul, and if, and if in some point you think differently, that too God will make clear to you. How will, how will God make it clear? Let me, let me suggest to us two ways. His word and his spirit. His word. First and foremost, the word of God is given to us as an objective revelation of God's will for us in our lives. It protects us from, from hearing the, the wrong voice of wisdom. It protects us as we read and as we read uh, and hear about lots of people uh, uh, and what they've done through the word of God. That gives us wisdom and insight revelation understanding and knowledge to how we should live our lives you know we read and we hear about a lot of people who do some really strange things and then and then they blame the results on god but hear me now reading and knowing the word of god turns our spiritual headlights on opens our minds to receive what god wants to say to us maybe even to correct us to guide us to lead us and if at some point you think differently, that too God will make clear to you. When we know God's word, then we're able to see and understand and, and, and see the right answers. Then we're able to, to make decisions. Then we're able to expose untruth. That's why the, the psalmist write, or we read in where it's written to us in the Psalms, in Psalm 119, verse 105, your word is a lamp to my feet and a light for my path. Hear this, if we want God's will for our lives, if we want his guidance in making the correct decisions, then we need to build our lives on the word of God. We need to read it, absorb it, and act in obedience to it. 
And that simply means we must read it, study it, and meditate upon it in our life. In one of these parables, Jesus talked about the importance of God's word in our lives. In, in Matthew chapter 7, verse 24 through 27, Jesus tells a story of two, of two men who built identical houses. The only difference between the two was their foundation. One was built on a rock and the other was built on sand. When the storm came, and, and you know, as they always do in our lives, the house that was built on sand was completely destroyed. Certainly we, we're going through a storm at this moment in all of our lives. We're going through a period of time in our lives where we're having to navigate through some challenging decisions and times. Our lives are being disrupted, our lives are being challenged and things are changing all the time. But one thing I know, we need to stand on the rock of Jesus. We need to stand on the rock of Jesus in our lives and he will navigate us through to the other side. In context to this verse, to the verse I read, the house was built, or the house that was built on the rock wasn't harmed at all. It stood firm. And Jesus said that the rock foundation that saved that house was listening to and obeying the word of God. And then we have God's spirit. The second part of a balanced biblical approach to knowing God's will for our life has to do with his spirit. The Holy Spirit also has a role to play in God's guidance for our lives. Jesus said in John 16, verse 13, but when he, the spirit of truth comes, he will guide you in all truth. He will not speak of his own, he will speak only what he hears and he will tell you what is yet to come. From what Jesus said here, we know that one of the jobs of the Holy Spirit is to lead, to guide, to direct, to guide us in truth. God's Spirit will never lead us or lead us to do anything that's contrary to what's taught in the Word of God. And again, the words of the Apostle Paul come true. And if in some point you think differently, that too God will make clear to you. God will make it clear to us through his word and by his spirit. And as we close this morning, the most clear, exact and truthful thing you and I will ever learn is this. We have freedom in Jesus. He is all we need. And if in some point you think differently, that too God will make clear to you. Amen? Let's just pray together. Heavenly Father, I thank you today for your revelation and truth to our hearts. I pray, Lord God, as we seek to hear what you're saying to us in our life, I pray that we would uh, just act in obedience to what you're saying as we read your word, as we hear you through the Spirit of God in our lives. We ask it, Father, for Jesus' sake, that he would receive all honour, all glory, and all praise. We pray for those less fortunate than ourselves today. And we ask in Jesus' name that you would undertake and minister in all situations. For our present situation, we put our trust and faith in you. Father, lead, guide and direct us that we would know your goodness, your grace, your mercy. And Father, help us to walk by faith, not by sight. Help us not to be affected by what's going on around us, but help us, Lord, to, to just trust you as we seek to glorify you in our lives. And we all said, Amen. Praise the Lord.